strong the sovereign, the eternal God. The one by whose bread creation is sustained, by whose wisdom heaven was crafted without a foundation. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Eternal, invincible, all wise God. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. For you establish the earth upon waters without true foundations, solid upon liquid. Hallowed be thy name. Thy wisdom is past finding out. The excellency of thy glory written upon the fingers of creation. Hallowed be thy name. Somebody hallow him today. Hallow him. Give him glory. Give him praise. From the depth of your being, acknowledge him. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name.
God whose work is perfect and all his ways are just king of Zion be elevated beyond every man every king every chieftain be elevated oh strong oh wise be elevated let all eyes behold your glory we hear you we worship you we make mention of thy name in the congregation of the righteous Thank you. thy heavens the work of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him The psalmist says, when we look upon the galaxies, its expanse, the quanta of the sun, moon, and star, the material and the resources required to develop and to build it, its vastness, its nature of being unquantified. When I consider the mysteries, the wisdom is required to sustain them in the galaxies in patterns forged by a wisdom yet not known when i turn around and look at man i i ask i have a question <laughs> he said what not who no you see if the question were who is man it would have been easy to answer but what is man? If we ask who is Ogbe, it's easy to answer. But what is Ogbe? Only the creator of Ogbe can answer that question. What are you? What is man that thou art mindful of him? You have so many things to think about. The Milky Way galaxy is enough trouble for a thousand years but what is man it is because of that question that he visits he doesn't visit doesn't need to necessarily visit the Milky Way galaxy but he has a schedule of visitation on men because of what they are hallelujah has it wondered has he ever been a wonder to you All the things we did in the past, everything we did in rebellion to God, suddenly when we decided to respond to him, he begins to cast his shadow over us. Now, it is not something you can understand why he came and why he's coming. Except you know what you are. I'm not saying who you are. I'm saying what? What you are. Because theologically, we can establish who we are in Christ, theologically. But you cannot establish what you are through theology. The very creator of your dimensions will have to reveal. It's not captured within the confines of theology. Angels were the ones speaking here. It was a debate in heaven. And angels were perplexed about the fact that God schedules visits for men 
There is a glory we have been called into. Of which our eyes must be enlightened to perceive fully. There is a high calling of privilege that has been cast upon us. Of which our understanding must be enlightened. And during the course of this meeting, we need to pray and say, Lord, enlighten my understanding. That there, there are many things you don't know that is the basis upon which God does what he does. Many things. And as sons, we need to understand the encodings of these mysteries. That is what makes us sure of the God of Zion. Can we ask God for enlightenment today? For illumination. That the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. These three days. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visitest him. Seek for you, we will call on your name. welcome you with uh, three scriptures before we go back to our subject it has been a circle of the move of God in our nation the sequence is quite predictable because God's interest has been sustained Somewhere in the 70s, there was a mighty avalanche of God, and his presence began to break out. Normal people, faceless, nameless people, that turned their hearts to the Lord, were given the privilege to seep into the, the agenda of God. And many things, the protocols of heaven, began to be established within our land. It was that revival that... Uh, facilitated what we call the oil boom because every time there's a spiritual revolution in a territory uh, it leads to an economic boom you know when Jesus was born uh, there were wise men that traveled in on the occasion of his birth and the substance with which that came was also itemized as part of cargo that shifted from Arabia to Israel because there was something born by God. Every time there's a, a move of God and the Spirit of God successfully gives birth to an intention of His, it is always followed up by an economic situation among the people. You know, when I gave my life to Christ, it was, uh, we believe that God was looking for somebody to bless that an angel had escaped out of heaven with a bag of gold looking for an address to deposit it 
And so we felt, all right, now you have been hunting us for so long, we have accepted your call. The next thing I was expecting that the bag of gold would begin to find expression. Because we were taught that Jesus was a money doubler, such a personality that gives people false hope. Then on the path of spiritual progress, I discovered that God will bless you with the essence of his spirit, the essence of himself, which is his spirit. And then through his spirit, you learn his ways, know how to wield his influence. And that point comes in your navigation uh, um, 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 process where the things that you require to fulfill your divine destiny will begin to navigate in your direction. Hallelujah. At that point, God must have given you a perspective, a goal, and an emphasis to life. It is only when such a structure has been developed in your life that if money now begins to come in, it will not be a distraction. The average young man, average young woman, is poised with a mission to make it, to become successful. As if success is an indigent of time. As far as God is concerned, you being a seed of eternity can only be evaluated by measures and standards of eternity. You are a pilgrim in time, but carrying out a script, establishing a script that was written in eternity. As far as scripture is concerned, you cannot be successful in time because the instrument by which the value of your life will be measured is not in time. It's not in terms of goods and materials. The goods and materials are relevant to the extent to which they provide support for us to fulfill God's ordination for our lives. They are not a goal in themselves. That's why I thought Jesus was a money doubler. But we were wrong. But what God does is this. Because if God prospers in your life, if his purposes take hold on your life, resources, natural and material resources, will eventually navigate in your direction. Now, those, the navigation is not occasioned by your focusing on the material. It's by your being aligned to the kingdom and its laws. Now, when we say, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, we are talking about being right with respect to the laws of that kingdom. Understanding the laws and subscribing to them. Are you with me? Now, there was a country we traveled to the other time. It was unlawful for a woman to be outside of her house in the daytime. So, when we went to that place, we only saw men. In order for you to be right with the laws as a woman, what will you do? Remain inside. Stay at home. And so the Bible says we should seek first, as a matter of priority in life, the kingdom. And we should also seek, as a matter of priority in life, to understand the laws of the kingdom of heaven and to align with them accurately. Upon such alignment, the Bible now reveals that the things that we need to fulfill our mandate as given by that kingdom will navigate in our direction. It is only in that context that the gospel of prosperity is accurate. Outside of that context, outside of that template and that sequence, outside of that order, what you are dealing with is called mammon. Outside of that orientation, what you are dealing with is, is called what? Now, there are many Christians in the body of Christ that have made money. But that money is not relevant to the kingdom of God because the template was violated. Now, one of the prayers we need to pray for ourselves is that you never make money until you have found the kingdom. Now, somebody that becomes a drunkard, a drunk, sorry, or is hooked on narcotics, hooked on cannabis in primary two, is it likely to amount to anything in life? He has found a love. Are you following now? He is addicted to something and his addiction is going to shape him and forge him and form him. Now, if your addiction is that you need materials and money, it's going to shape you and form you and forge you. If your addiction, in, meanwhile, there are many alternatives of subscription as far as human life is concerned. 
because of our limited insight into spirit structure. The devil takes advantage of that limitation to lure us into paths that are not paths ordained by God for us by destiny. Now, so the Bible reveals that when we become perfectly in alignment with the structure, the protocol, the emphasis of the kingdom of heaven, then the things we need to fulfill the mandate from that kingdom begins to navigate in our direction. And that's the sub subscribed pattern according to the scriptures. Now, this guy made a statement here in the book of Psalms 8 as I welcome us this time. He said, when I consider the works of thy hands, the heavens, I put into cognizance the systems that can be visibly identified in creation. Then I ask a question. What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is the son of man that thou visitest him? I need to ask that question in another context. What is Nigeria that thou art mindful of him? Hallelujah. According to scripture, every nation is a corporate persona. So if Israel is addressed, Israel is addressed as a him, as a son, as a firstborn. So don't say my English was wrong when I said, what is Nigeria that you are mindful of him? In the 70s, there was a visitation of God. Mighty visitation. Most of our mommies here were part. That was when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Mighty things began to happen in their lives. The foundation that the enemy had laid painstakingly for many years was shattered because of that move of God. Philosophy of people changed. They took on the perspective of the kingdom of God. It became difficult for territorial uh, spirits to control them because they were loyal to Christ. Something new began to break out in the land. God began to administer his purposes, administer his seasons and his sequences. Many things began to take place. Now, that revival was a wonderful move of God which did not last for too long. Now, most of the people that were partakers of that move of God, they were partakers when they were young. Hallelujah. Suddenly again, when we look around, there's so much drought, there's economic recession in the country, but God is pouring out his spirit. He's coming again. He's coming on young people. Now, what we have to ask ourselves a question. Because the reason why the angels debated was why is it that you are visiting? Now, the secret behind his visitation was tied to what man was. Now, if you don't know what you are, you will not be able to contend for the environment that occasions God's visitation. That means you are likely to lose visitations in your life because you don't know why God is visiting. He is visiting because of what you are. I'm just trying to welcome you with, with a charge before we go into Bible study. When we see the sequence of the move of God and the circle of the move of God, we can actually see the pattern. You see, are you with me? We went somewhere in Idoma land and uh, we were told about a family. A family that is prone to the oppression of the spirit of death. And uh, this spirit of death comes every three years. Are you with me? It's not every family that that spirit of death visits, but the spirit of death knows the address of these people. And there's a schedule of visitation that has been put in place. Do you understand that? Such that elders in that family can actually predict with a high degree of accuracy the next time the visit will come. So we need to ask a question. What is this family that the spirit of death comes to what? Visit them. Now, we need to understand what occasions the move of a spirit. 
You see, if you are putting up a wedding and you, you draw out cards and invite people, human beings, natural people, attend an occasion because of invitation. But spirit beings are not invited that way. There are some things that must be on ground that okay, and spirit beings are more, they keep to time much more than natural beings. Are you with me? So if there's a circle of visitation that has been seen and a sequence of seasons that he has taken advantage of to make contact with people, there is a reason why he does that. That reason is what man is. Did you get that? Now, so, we now went to that family to find out what is this family that the spirit of death does not forget the address here every three years. I hope you know this search is a science. <laughs> I am unto Zele Kabbalah. So we were now told that the head of the family was a slave. But when his master discovered that in addition to his ability to serve, he also has powers and the wisdom of divination to peep into the spirit and to bring profit from the insight that he receives. His description of servitude now changed. They created a stool for him so that he can be comfortable to operate. <laughs> and he was the personal priest of the king of that land to whom he was sold as a slave. After serving this king faithfully for so long, the king did not know how to bless him again other than to offer him his freedom. Go back. Trace your people. So he traced and he came back. You know, all he had done while he was in slavery was what? Consult. Maybe before slavery, he had other descriptions. Maybe he was a farmer and many other things he could do. But now, he has only one thing he knows very well, which is to consult some spirits. So he came back with some mobile and static implements of consultation. You know, they are mobile ones. You can put it, it's user-friendly. can go to the pocket. <laughs> there are some that must be planted. So he had a vehicle convey his implements and he set it up somewhere in the Doma land and began to make a family. Now, because he understood the spirit very well, he knew how to appease the spirit when they were angry. By bringing a horse. All right, he bought a horse and brought it to the compound, did some things. So the spirit, instead of killing people, they will feast on this horse. So in few days' time, you see the horse growing lean, getting dried up till it dies. Then the spirits will go. The guy has the skill of what? Of, oh my. Hey. You see, people suffer when you don't know how to, to consult. Mm. If you don't know how to consult, ah, the Lord will help. So the man was killed. He knew how to consult with the spirit. He knew what he could do as an alternative for what the spirit wanted that was precious to him. So as long as he was alive, nobody died. Now, he made a mistake. He did not transfer the knowledge he had gathered. So when he now died, the spirits keep time. And they came. And there was nobody with the knowledge to appease them adequately. So they began to feast. And he, he, in fact, I believe he knew the things were going to happen that way. So he married plenty wives. And produced firewood for the fire. Sufficiently. Now, the spirits have visited and visited such that they know that they run on a schedule now of three years. Spirits don't visit like that. So let us find out what you are. Because it is what you are that determines the level of visitation of spirits that you can have. 
Now, if you don't know those things that make for visitation, you will not be strong in them. And if you are not strong in them, you are vulnerable. Hallelujah. Those days, when we were looking for people that understood the way of spirit, you need to travel to villages now. They bring sacrifices to the office, put it under the chair. Even when United Nations Secretariat was bombed in Abuja, there were charms under the carpet. Talisman was under the rug. Huge things were hidden when Boko Haram blew UN house in Abuja. May the Lord give you understanding. You see, spirits don't visit like that. There is something that compares their visitation. Now, so there's a question. The question is what? What is man that you are what? Are mindful of him. What is Nigeria that you are mindful of him? You keep coming. You keep reaching out. You keep revealing yourself. You must have a plan. What exactly? Why is because we went to Benin Republic. In Benin Republic, the police is the very is the most redundant part of that country. Are you with me? Most what? Redundant. Because every Benin Republic man is 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 is, is a sorcerer. So if you steal from him, he doesn't need to call, report the case to police. He can handle it indoors. <laughs> so, so the police is redundant. They don't have they don't have work to do. When you check the Republic, you discover that God's visitation is cast. Even in the history of the nation, you hardly find a time where they said God visited. Meanwhile, there is no boundary that demarcates the Republic from Nigeria. But if you cross over to this side, you will see visitation. Then you begin to ask, what is Nigeria? What exactly occasions this kind of things? Uh, so let's look at a few. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, hallelujah. Amen. Now, before we look at a few, I would like us to also look at verse 5 quickly. Verse 5 gives us a description of the design of man. Are you with me? The design. <laughs> now, have you seen some vehicles at the back? They write 2.0. It's in accordance. That's 2.0 liter engine. Sometimes you see 1.6. That is Starlet. 1.8 Corolla. 2.0 Camry. 2.4. 2.2 Avalon. Have you seen V8 before? Those are design specifications. Now, according to the design of man in Psalms 8, verse 5, the Bible says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. I will look, I, will, I, I want to leave that aspect. I don't want to touch that aspect. It will take us too long to recover if we go on that journey. Meanwhile, it is needful for you to understand if you click on the word angels and check it in the Hebrew text, the Greek text, sorry, the Hebrew text, you will see that that word angels, there is Elohim. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. Now, I don't want to go into that. Right? And then secondly, that means in the hierarchy of spirits, we have Elohim, we have man. Because of this class that you have found yourself, you can believe anything. You are not with me. See, are you here? Two, also, you can love anything. Because of the class you have found yourself, a little lower than the Elohim. You have the ability to believe, and you can believe as all. And because you believe as all spirit, the influence of as all can be heavy on your life just because you, you don't understand that class that God has designed you to function from. 
One of the compliments of that class is that what you can believe in. Another compliment of that class is that you can love. So you hear instructions in scripture. Love not the world. That means you can love it. You have the ability to love it. So the scripture will, likes to put us in perspective. So that the potential you have by reason of your class of making will not become an offense to you. Will not create a reason for your being damaged. So there's instruction coming so that you can manage that potential effectively. He said, love not the world, neither the things of this world. You will hear Jesus saying, where is your faith? It means you have doubted me because you are believing something else. Doubt is not absence of faith. Too. It is believing that something contrary to the word of God will happen in your life. And you believe it much more than the word of God. You see, because of this class that you have been created into, you must believe something. You must love something. And what you believe and what you love, to a great extent, will de de determine your outcome. Are you still with me? Now, so, in ranking, he comes immediately after the class of the Elohim. That's why he's the only one that has the capacity to bear and to carry the life of God. He can actually carry the life of the realm of the Elohim. But he doesn't have the stature to be part of the Godhead. Are you, are you still with me? It is because of his ranking in the spirit realm that he, he can now operate with the design of functioning as the image of God. You know, the design mode was that it was designed to be in the image and the likeness of God. It is because of that class that he is, that these possibilities are bound to him, that this design is possible. And I don't want to press further to explain what it means to be in the image of God and in the likeness of God. We'll do that for another time. If you are still here, say Amen. Amen. Second. According to design, this personality called man is a crowned being. Now look at it critically from verse 5. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. How many of you have maybe an iPad or a pad or something? And you can check the Hebrew word for angels. So that we can confirm that it's Elohim that is there. Have you checked it's Elohim? Alright. So, so the interpreters became very, very agitated when they saw Elohim. Say, ah, how would they say man? Classify man with Elohim. Hey, let's put angel there. Do uh, you understand that? Just to hallow God's name. But that was not accurate. What is there is Elohim. That has made him a little lower than Elohim. So he can carry Elohim's life. But he cannot be in Elohim's council. The Godhead. The government formed by Elohim. He cannot feature there. So in terms of authority within the divine structure... He is subordinate, but he has the capacity to be able to reflect and to administer the wisdom, the dynamics of Elohim. And that's why he is called, by description, a, a child of the Most High God. I have said, ye are gods. All of ye are children of the Most High God. Children, miniature expressions of God. There's a dimension of God that is only you. That can express upon the face of the earth. You become an advertisement of a dimension of God if you operate under the authority of God. You are children of the Most High God because they are in that class that is lower than the Elohim. Now, this classification that I speak of is higher than the angelic. Now, so you are related to God based on life. Now that you are born again, you have the life of God. But angels do not have the life of God. When angels rebel, they become demons. Redemption is not something that angels can enjoy. 
But you can enjoy redemption because of the class that you'll find yourself. Hallelujah. Secondly, the Bible reveals that man is a crowned being. For thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Not a physical crown like the type we'll carry around. The type kings wear. But he's crowned with what? Glory and honor. Now, you don't know what that means. Let's start with glory. Let me give you an idea. This is a study we can do for long. I'm just greeting you. To bring, you came, you traveled from far. Trying to help you come out of the Benue Lynx bus that brought you so that we can steady ourselves on the word of God. You see, the garment that Adam was putting on, that garment was not physical. According to creation, garments, real garments by creation, real garments grow from inside out. Now, if you see a bird when it comes out of an egg, he's naked. Then over time, the feathers begin to grow out. Is that true? Man, when man was created, uh, you know in this light bulb, there is something called a filament. That's where the light comes from. Just like you, there's something God put inside of you, which has now satisfied your design pattern as being in the image of God. He put something like that filament. So when that filament begins to glow, the light comes from within out. Just like the feathers of a chicken comes from where? Every clothing that God made for creation, that's the pattern of clothing. When you see a goat, where does it come from? Inside. Does it put something on? This is an aberration. This one. And you won't need it when we come into our reality. You won't need this. You are not with me. <laughs> he was crowned with what? That was part of his, his makeup. There was a filament of light that burned from inside and it was so much... Now, can you look into this filament? Can you look into this bulb now? It's difficult to see the filament. Can you see it? So, his nakedness was covered because the filament was intact. The current was flowing and he glowed. So, you could not see his nakedness. Are you with me? He was crowned with what? Because of that glory that he was crowned with, he could peep into heaven. That guy was a cool guy. <laughs> Hallelujah. He could do what? Peep into heaven. Now, in creation, the Bible says that whatsoever Adam called a creature, that was the name thereof. You see, the name existed in heaven. All he did was peep into heaven and call it the same name that it already was. That was the name. The name existed. He just saw it and called it such. He could peep into heaven. And if he was supposed to also name fishes, Jesus was not the first person that walked on water. He had a way of subduing creation. He was a master within the territory. Do you understand that? I don't have time to go into this thing. Let me just show you why he visits. Because many of you have lost the visitation of God on your life. The move of God, you could not grow it. You could not capture it. You could not retain it. You didn't know how the seasons of the growth of that life actually functions. And because of that, we have lost so many important things that is difficult for us to recapture. I pray that during the course of this meeting, God will begin to restore things that we ignorantly lost. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Remember, Adam was not naked. He had a garment that came from where? Inside out. So we could now see the filament when the current stopped flowing. We now saw the filament. He now knew he was what? Because the, nothing happened to him. It's just the current on the, flima, the, the supply was, was cut off. So the filament became exposed. And he took off and took leave. And he saw the substitution was not a very worthy one. Mm. Now, you see, ah, 
No, we can't go there. All right. So he was crowned with what? Glory. Glory and crowned with what? Honor. With honor. Now, the Bible reveals that a man that is held in honor and knoweth not is like what? A beast. That means there is a degrading that happens to such a man just because he doesn't know there's honor upon his life. He will function like flesh and bone, like a beast in the field. Flesh, blood, bone. He will take on the culture of flesh, blood, and bone. The instincts of the natural creation. The instinct of lust. The instinct of aggression. Of violence. Survival of the fittest. He will now begin to live like that. That is the way of the beast. You are not with me. When you go to campus and you see somebody say it's in black axe, it's, that's survival of the fist. That's, that's the way of the beast. That's the way of the lion in the jungle. Now, so God is expecting us to function based on a civilization that is superior to the beastly way of things in the animal kingdom. There is something he's calling us to subscribe to. It's higher than that level. But if you don't know that there's honor on your life, you will end up operating on that level of civilization. Meanwhile, by design, you were crowned with glory. You were crowned with what? Did you get it? Now, I don't want to press further. But I need to press further. Hey, well, we're in trouble now. This my greeting has gone far. I would like us to look at a graphic picture in the book of Acts chapter 2. Suddenly you begin to see that honor that man was crowned with restored and the honor is beginning to play out. It's beginning to play out. It's beginning to work out a mystery. Remember, the filament is where? The garment grows from. That's how the garment is. That was the garment that Paul was praying for. That he be clothed with. When, when the, our elder Toja was preaching and telling us about the garment. The other day, many of us thought it was a garment that you wear. Like. How is it? Inside out. It radiates. And then you cannot see the filament. I hope you know we are still human. Although God men, there's a God aspect of our existence that is overwhelming our humanity. So we still make mistakes like men. But is that glory covers it? Don't you think I make many mistakes? Plenty. Plenty of them. Sometimes I even struggle with God. With God said no, I say, Kai. But you see, God allows the glory to cover you. And when people see you, they don't see that this man is struggling. They don't see that this man struggles with prayer sometimes. They just see that, behold the hand of God. <laughs> It's a garment. <laughs> it's a garment. They don't see all the perspectives, the dimensions of humanity that comes up, of which the Bible reveals that the spirit effect. Because the reason for the spirit's help on our humanity and its attendant insufficiencies, because God is not expecting you to operate as a human. No. So because of that, there is resources are made available to ensure that you are not stuck in the challenges and the limitations of humans. So the spirit helped our infirmity so that you can go beyond that limitation and function on a pedestal that normal humans cannot function in. You see, if you are just a normal man around, you are challenged. The reason why there is grace is so that we can handle impossible things. We can we can deal with impossible situations. Because for a natural human being to stop sinning is not possible. But when grace now comes, it has the capacity to handle things that human beings cannot handle. That in itself is glory at work. Something beaming from the inside 
that covers his humanity. Are you with me? By design, we were crowned with glory and honor. Now, the word there is crowned. You don't crown a servant. You crown a servant. It means that there is a status of kingship that we have by design. So the kingdom of God is not a kingdom of king and subjects. It's a kingdom of king and kings. The earth does not know this kind of kingdom. Now, so we need to study it differently and with more attention. Because it doesn't look like what we are used to. It's a kingdom of what? King and kings. And that perspective is still sustained in the book of Revelation. When the Bible reveals that we are priests and what? Okay. It is because of the crown that you have that you can search in true by the Spirit into the secrets of God. Because the Bible says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search into it. So one of our job description in this kingdom is to search into things concealed. And when God hid those things, he did not hide them from us. But he hid them for us. But if you are not functioning in your capacity as a king to search into things, you will remain without wisdom. Check your Bible critically. The people of God prospered most when there were contrary situations. When you say captivity, a nation rises out of captivity with all the resources they need to power them, to power their economy. That is a proof that God is involved. That is a proof that a covenant sustains them. Something beyond the books, beyond economics, beyond political science is what is sustaining them. According to the plan of the Islamic people, by next year we should have been wiped out. This country should be an Islamic nation. 2016 should be the day, the year of the green flag. Because green happens to be the color of Islam. Hallelujah. That is not going to happen anymore. Because there's something beyond the plan. And the plan was meticulous. The plan was all inclusive. It included the north, south, the east, and the west. But you see, the reason why human beings cannot plan something against the will of God and it will prosper is because human beings are time-based. There was such a time that Satan was created. He is, limit, he is limited. But when we are talking about wisdom, the eternal wisdom, um, it can only be revealed. And that's why kings have to be created in the kingdom that have the capacity to search into that wisdom by which the heavens were suspended and created. By which the delicate balance of things in the visible creation were put in place so that they can function in the glory of their God and bask in the glory of their creator to the end and the intent that principalities and powers will be subdued and shown the manifold wisdom of God because there are kings that can search into the protocol of heaven and administer the policies of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, so that's the kind of being that man is by design. But you see, what concerns me in this outlay is why God visits. That is shrouded in a mystery. It's shrouded in what man is. Not how he was created. Not the design, but what he is. What you are. Not who you are. Not what your father called you. Not who your teachers or the people scored you, they gave you a third class degree and then you have accepted that. That this is, this is my worth, this is my value. You know, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll just do a little Bible study. In fact, my time for introduction has finished. So we'll leave this one and go to the subject matter. But I can tell you one of the reasons or one of the things behind what are you. Now, do you know that some people, some things we did and we came out of. Are you with me? Mistakes we made, we survived. Some people tried it, they died. Why did those people die? Was it that God is partial? No, it's because of what you are. There's something you are that is different from what the peop- those other guys are. Uh, so because of that, that's why you were able to escape some things. What is man? 
that thou art mindful of him. Now let's do let's do a study quickly. No, the other day we were trying to look at a scripture, just look at it briefly, and then we'll go to the book of uh, Proverbs and continue our journey. Hey, but if I go into that scripture, I will not be able to come out. Sky, no, I won't go there. Now, you see, <laughs> in that village that I spoke about, that the spirit of death visits a family. Are you with me? One of the reasons why, why the spirit comes is because the spirit has a covenant with the family. It has what? A covenant with the family. Now, so if we talk about what is this family, one of the things you look at is the covenants. What is this family? You look at the prophecies. What is this family? We look at the promises that came to this family from God. What is this family? Is ancestors. Is there an ancestry in this family that links to God? Was there a man at any point in time that was raised, that began to raise this family up before God? That is the excuse. The excuse of his utterances that God will use to enter the family. Was there any, is there heritage that is divine among them? Are you with me? Heritage. You cannot do so much outside of a heritage. We were doing an analysis of Nigeria and we began from the southeastern part of Nigeria. Ah, okay, somebody might come from there, so I will not go. I will not go deep. Of all the southeastern parts of Nigeria, there is spiritual heritage, sufficient and robust spiritual heritage for God, for a man of destiny to anchor upon to ask, make demands on heaven for dividends for that particular locality. There's robust heritage. The leanest land of heritage in the whole eastern, southeastern part of Nigeria is Imo State. I'll stop there. Now, if in your family you lack, you are the first generation Christian in your family, first generation. Your assignment is different from my own. I am second generation. My fathers, they accepted Jesus, brought his ways among us, began to teach his culture. I am more advanced than you. You are trying to secure a potter, secure a covenant, secure a promise and a prophecy, an utterance that will reveal God's commitment to your family. That utterance has been secured in my own case. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Without heritage, there is little spiritual business you can do. And if God has not promised you anything, <laughs> you don't have anything. Hallelujah. Because what you are begins from what has God promised you. What you are begins from what covenant do you have with God in your family. If you see that the mother is prophetic, the first daughter is prophetic. Second daughter is prophetic. Those things don't happen often. It is happening because maybe that woman is an intercessor. And because of her stature in the presence of God, she has secured a line of access that, that the river of God is flowing through. And anybody that river touches becomes indebted to Christ by reason of the affiliations that the woman has secured before God. Some of us are born again because of our mother's prayed. Yes, Would have been gangsters out there. My God, terrible kind. Of... <laughs> oh my God, you are not following me. <laughs> you are, see, there's nothing you are that you are because you are wise. It's not human wisdom that counts in the realm where things matter. What is the heritage on ground? So your assignment is different from mine. If you see me sleeping, don't sleep. Because me, my father has received the bomb, received the trouble. They did not know how to handle it, but they stood their ground and died with their faith. That has created, shifted the balance. And the pendulum in that context has moved in... in judgment has been declared in favor of the saints. In, in favor of the righteous. If any righteous man stands, it will be easy for him to stand. There are places where if righteous people stand, except you understand 
the skills to deal with spiritual things, they are likely to die. He wants to make progress, he begins to fail. He begins to intercede, death begins to come. And those things are happening because there is a handwriting, a signature that has been written on ground that empowers demonic visitation. Are you with me? So the spiritual substance of a particular family is different from another one. So when we ask what is man, we're asking of the tal mark that has been constructed that will afford spirit beings access. The gangway that has been situated to afford spirit beings access to that family to colonize and influence it. Are you with me? Oh, you are not here. Now, so when we talk about covenant, the spirit of death visits that family because there's a covenant that has afforded him the opportunity. You see, a spirit being doesn't have light, right to operate in this world. If you find a spirit being without a legal premise of oppression, roaming around, you can arrest that spirit being for 25 years. Keep him bound for 25 years. You, you'll be dead for 25 years because he doesn't have any business around here. On what, who, which human being permitted you to operate? Now, so there must be a legal premise. You need to study diploma in law and jurisprudence to be able to understand the book of uh, Romans chapter 5 and 6. Because the legal premise upon which uh, redemption was established is clearly, the words used there are words registered in the court of law. When you hear words like justification, justification is what happens, is what we call discharge and are acquitted. Those are legal registers. And Paul went all legal when he was trying to establish the premise upon which redemption is established. Without that premise, the Holy Spirit cannot come and give you life, even if you accept Jesus. Because nothing just happens in the realm of the spirit. It's occasioned by the protocol of the realm. That's why wizards don't live long. Their act is established on violating spiritual principles. So they don't live long. In fact, there are some kind of things you do in wizardry that will make you slim. Oh my God. If you know that realm, you can kill a wizard easily. You can kill somebody. You can kill. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. The power that wielded creation, that coupled creation, put creation in place, is such a vast power, an enormous power, that your little act of sorcery cannot control. Because of your inability to control its vastness, you ultimately become a casualty from its temper. That's why, you see, in sorcery, you can actually invoke the spirit and do the thing. It happens quickly. But in Christianity, we wait for the Holy Ghost to move. I, 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 for many of us, you believe this one is weak. That one is more active, more decisive. It has potential to bring about instant change in line with your desires. All of you that did that thing will go will be wiped out and the flood will still be wiping your children your grandchildren because of a violation of a spiritual pillar we wait for the holy ghost to come so that when he comes he that created can wield the power of creation to do his own business that's why in this kingdom we surrender our will okay maybe you want to kill somebody did you something if you want to kill and that's the truth many times the best thing would have been that some people die just kill but you want to kill but ah, he comes he say Keep that thing down. Keep that thing down. Hey. Hey. You hold on. You hold on. You hold on. You hold on. Then he will diffuse that your willingness to keep. Then you will now pretend as if he has forgotten for five years. Then when you have now forgotten, he now says, okay, that man you say you want to kill is now, I want to kill him. <laughs> you say, ah, oh, sorry, don't. No. That thing you did five years ago is now the effect is coming. It, see, the, the, the things have aligned. The offenses have accumulated. An incense has gone to heaven. A memorial has been created. God must... Do you understand? So it is not because you willed it. It's not because you wanted it. It's because the king decided on it. By an act of his own will, free will, then he decides to gather the powers by which creation... 
You see, when he begins to judge, you cannot stop. You were the one that engaged. You reminded him. Judgment. When he starts, even you yourself will be afraid. He begins to wipe out. So you now come and say, Have mercy! Now that your prayer doesn't have enough power to stand there because of what has been contracted. A lot of variables were put in place for him to decide on that line of action. You see, witchcraft is predicated on the use of the human will. This is what I want. So witchcraft now shows you how to get what you want. Oh my. Are you with me? Don't worry. I will show you the difference between witchcraft and obeying and functioning by the Spirit. I will show you there are two different parameters. Now, so when they began to preach in the body of Christ and say things like, you can have what you want, that's witchcraft. Because that's not the way of the kingdom. You have what the king wants. You are who the king says you are. You can even be so anointed, but God says today don't lay hands. And the anointing that day is raging. It's raging. It's a test. Whether or not you decide to do your own thing. And the thing will still happen because you are you anointed to a particular level. Things will still happen and all kinds of stuff. But you have violated kingdom protocol. That one act you took can take away three years of your life. But if I look as if nothing happened, we still had the cripples healed. People still glorified God. And, uh, that, you, it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. Are you still with me? Now, so, the man that is in custody of wizardry can say, okay, I have the skills, I have the wisdom to actually create a pathway for your intentions. You say you want to kill this person. Yes. You want to kill the person? Okay. Bring that thing. So he just wants you to commit yourself enough so that when he allows you to function in that wisdom, he will not be held responsible. So that thing he said you should bring, it's not as if they need to bring it, but it's your own hand that will bring it so that you are the one that is doing it through the wisdom that has been made available. Me, I'm just connecting you with the wisdom like a library. <laughs> it goes on record that you push your will to achieve this. That's why witchcraft has the capacity to achieve bending and breaking. I will explain that subsequently, not now. Bending and breaking. Through divination, you can see ahead. Now, that seeing ahead is by what we call um, um, the oppression of familiar spirits, which is a very technical name. It's, it's demonic network. That's what it means. When a herbalist says, your name is Samson, it's not because he had any revelation. It's because there is a demonic network that is working with him. They went and sourced out information for him. And that's why whenever a herbalist prophesies or says something futuristic, it can only be accurate if it's the thing that his own band of demons have already effected in the supernatural realm. That's why many of T.B. Joshua's prophecies doesn't come to pass. It's a demonic network. Okay, let me leave it. Since you, you are not with me. <laughs> you are not with me, so let me go back to my... Uh, they can tell you about now that your name is this, this thing, you went to look for a visa. It's a demonic network. It's not inspiration. It's just a network of demons. That's what we call familiar spirits. Those networks, those demons are around you in your environment. They knew your father and all of that. So they can bring information of the past and the present. It's a network of demons. That's not inspiration. No. It's okay. Amen. Amen. Now let's start our Bible study from John chapter 14. We need 14 days to teach on how to handle witchcraft. 14 days. You can become so skillful in handling witchcraft that a witch in your compound will pack without confrontation. Just now, if they are aware you have that kind of knowledge, they will not stay close to you. 
They won't stay close to you. In, in scripture, witchcraft is as, oh, it's very old. Though. Just like the one in your village. It's older than the one in your village. So we can trace it from there and find its, 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 its structure, its oppression, the way it afflicts. And now we can live above its influence. But we'll not do that now. Come with me to John chapter 14. We'll do Bible study for two days. Today and tomorrow. There's a lot to cover. Then we'll switch the service on Sunday night. Are you with me in John chapter 14? The people of God must be equipped. The structure and the shape of discipleship now must be very different from what it was 30 years ago. All right? There's a new measure of God's spirit in the earth. That measure is instructing a deeper scope of wisdom which we will need to realize God's intentions for us in this season. Hmm? If you are somebody that is given to prayer and intercession, through prayer and intercession, you are privileged to enter into places in Christ Jesus. Places that you don't know mentally, but places that you know spiritually. And you come to a church service, or you attend a church service, and the pastor is preaching. If the pastor's preaching is not coming from the places you have been in the spirit through prayer, such a pastor will not be able to bless you. It is proof. It is proof that your destiny cannot. Okay, let's stop there. Um, I just said open John chapter 14. Our land is dry. This is our nation. It's dry of truth. The current measure of God that is in the earth finds little expression in little in, 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 in places in this country. That means the discipleship for this moment is not accurately delivered. The impact of our ignorance and of our inaccuracy will be felt in the next seven years. And that's why there is a responsibility upon your life. It is because of that responsibility we need to look diligently into the issues that we are raising now. It's no longer about church of numbers. We're talking about how many people have stature in the congregation. Because if we don't have sufficient stature, we'll not be able to contend with that which is coming. We are winning a, a war against the Islamic world now. They will, they will strike back. They will strike back with everything they have. After a little window of peace. It is that window, that striking back, that we need to gain stature to survive. Hallelujah. I speak in parables. God will help us. Now, um, let's go to the book of John quickly as we begin our Bible study. You can welcome somebody close to you. You are welcome. Because you will not have the opportunity. When we go now, you will not know there is somebody sitting close. If the person's tie is good, you can acknowledge it. Your tie is wonderful. Sitting well, you look gorgeous. Oh my God. Malako se makayat. Hallelujah. John chapter 14. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also and whither i go ye know and ye and the way ye know Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus answered and said unto him, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but my me. You know, we started last month on what? The path of life. Hmm. Now, so Jesus, there was a news that he sent into the camp of the apostles. There was a news. And because of the news that he revealed, the hearts of the apostles was troubled. He said, no, let not your heart be troubled. Continue having faith in God. Have faith in me. Because in my father's house, I want us to get the terms accurately. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. We'll do Bible study for 20 minutes before we pray. In my father's house, there are many. Now, you see, when we read that scripture, we read it upside down. It is as if we are reading in our father's mansion, there are many houses. No. He said, in my father's house, there are many I need to explain that. Because it is easy to talk about houses in a mansion. But when we are talking about mansions in a house, it's a mystery. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next statement was, I go to prepare a place for you. For about 20 years, 27 years, the body of Christ, our perception is that he is going to heaven. And according to... Uh, uh, the book of John has many, how many chapters? Eh? 21. Do you think Jesus was talking about going back to heaven in 14? He's not going back to heaven now. He's going to the cross. That's where he's going. So, this scripture has nothing to do with heaven. Uh, God will help us in, in Jesus' name. Uh, so he said, in my father's ah, so people are offended. <laughs> May the veil on your eyes that has made us like this. <laughs> May that veil be removed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he's not going to heaven. He's going to the cross. And he's telling them about what will happen as a result of going to the cross. See, in my father's heart. Ah, they are what? How oh, I wish we can do this job. The book of John from chapter 1. Chapter 1 to 13 is the story of the father's house he told. And Jesus was the father's house. If you check your scripture critically, you'll find out that there are two obsessions God has. One, he, he wants to be believed. He what? God is desperate to be believed. And that's why salvation is never contracted until what? Believe. One of the qualities we have in the class of beings that we have found ourselves by reason of ordination is that we have the capacity to believe and to believe anything whatsoever. But if by any means you believe that Jesus is Lord and that he was raised from the dead, you confess it with your mouth. The Bible says you will be what? Our entrance into the kingdom of God is predicated on the exercise of our faith. Is that true? Meanwhile, that which the provision of heaven that makes our faith of essence is grace. Is grace that supplied the provision that your faith is acting upon. And that's why the Bible says we are saved by grace, through the instrumentality of faith. Is that true? It's grace that made it available. Faith made it your own property. Are you with me now? God must be believed for him to be real to you. So there's an obsession that God has. And the obsession is that what? People need to believe me. That's number one. Number two, if you check your Bible critically, have you heard when Isaiah said, Where is the place of my rest? And then the answer was, On this man will I look at. Even him that is poor and of a contrite heart and trembles 
at my wall. The question in view was, where is the place of my rest? Because God cannot tabernacle in houses made by hands. He's looking for houses among men. The first personality that fulfilled the need for an accommodation for God is Jesus. That's why on the day of John the Baptist's baptismal service, when Jesus appeared, heaven accredited him because in him, God's need was met. God had a dwelling in him. Now, if we were to go through the book of John from 1 to 13, you are going to see the dynamics of the Father's house. Jesus was speaking about himself. At that point in time, he was the only accommodation for the Father. And that was not profitable for the Father. So, you see, in my Father's house, there's capacity in me that you cannot access except I go somewhere. Mm. You are not here. Now, we are taking it gradually because uh, hey, the Lord will help us. I have to go somewhere. I have to go to the cross and be pierced. This house must be sown as a seed so that it will be recovered in the sense that you and you will be part of my body and there will be mansions within this house. You don't get it. Oh my. So the people that thought that they killed him only set him free. Because it was the only house the father had. And the father wanted rooms. His vastness, his capacity, wanted to tabernacle in many rooms. And God was looking at, on this man will I look at. His accommodation is among men. And Jesus was the first of such. And his going to the cross was what brought us into his body. As members of his flesh and of his bones. So that in the father's house... You and me are there as mansions, dwellings for our God. He was not talking about going to heaven. He was talking about going to where? The cross. Now, you see, Christ Jesus happens to be the author and the finisher of our faith. <laughs> now that God has successfully, through the work of the cross, brought you to become a member of Christ, something has happened. The description of your life can no longer be fully articulated outside of the work of Christ. It will be the work of Christ. If you put a ruler inside your Bible and take your Bible to Kanu, where is the ruler? It's where? In Kanu. Because it is where? In the Bible. So God, by an act of his authority, included you in Christ. So that if he's dealing with Christ, what is he doing? He's dealing with you. That is the meaning of him being the author and the finisher of our faith. You cannot have an experience that is outside of Christ. Because you are in a habitat. You must embrace the realities in that habitat. If God is going to deal with you, he deals with you as a member. Where? In Christ. And that became a possibility just because Jesus went to the cross. Oh, you are now here. The cross now becomes the only way and I mean, when I say only, I mean only. Doctrinally, theologically, is the only way God can get glory for man. Think about it. You have not thought. Think about it first. That's the only way God can get glory from what? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. It's what? The only way God can get glory from, from the cross has a vocabulary. There's something it speaks every time. There's only one language and it can only speak one word. And the language of the cross is death. Everything that has become part of your reality that is not in line with what God originally constructed. The cross will say what? Death. And that's why your ambitions will have to die. Now, see, the thing is, you be loyal to the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Don't do anything. Just be what? Loyal to the Holy Ghost. He will ensure that your ambitions are killed. He will administer death. The legal premise 
upon which the Holy Spirit has to administer debt to anything that is not God's original context is what the cross. I wanted to be a lecturer. Is it bad to be a lecturer? <laughs> ah, I wanted to come to lecture without notebook and draw structures, labor, and give notes from the brain, which is what I had the ability to do because I could cram a handout, 235 pages. I could cram a textbook and I could read the textbook out for you and add the pages. Yes, I had that ability. In fact, there was a time I was cramming the Bible. I said I would start with New Testament. That was where God now met me. Say, young man. <laughs> so I wanted to be that lecturer that would just show up like this. No notebook. And they say, he is a colossus. It's an icon. It's a luminary. Oh my. And as long as I went towards that, my objective... The Holy Ghost had a quarrel with me. Because that was going to contend with his purpose for my life. The reason for the endowment was not chemistry. It was the Bible. And I wanted to apply a divine resource to accomplish a mundane thing. So I had quarrel with him. So by reason of the verdict of the cross, he had the license to administer death to that ambition. And he did it in a most mysterious way. He made one lecturer to become my enemy. And then that lecturer became exam officer. So my grades fell like a coin. And my pride was anchored on my grades. Because when I preached, I said, you know, last time I checked, my GP was... Uh... <laughs> Macabre music. <laughs> so in order to help the boy... What he did was he had to administer death to the verdict of the cross on that place where the nerve of pride was anchored. Now, there are some of you that some things are happening in your life. You are wondering, where is God? He is he's walking. Mm. <laughs> and let me ad assure you, you are not possessed. Some people say, I'm possessed. I'm spiritual. Hey, now light, now walk. Now walk. And the Lord begins to administer death until my grace fell to a point where I could no longer be a lecturer. So I now let go. And that's how hard we are in the hand of God. We are, we are resilient. So God needs to cripple us first. Then as a crippled man, you now say, yes, Jesus. <laughs> so those dealings, he has liberty to administer those dealings because of that thing called what? Cross. And the cross is what included you in Christ. There are three faces of the ministry of Christ. The first is the incarnation, which we cannot talk about. That's the mystery of godliness. How God became man. And when he became man, he retained the attributes of God manifesting through human virtues. And as man, Jesus was the definition of God. It's a mystery. Alright, let's not press it too much. I will. When uh, Peter, Peter gave us insight, because a questionnaire went out, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And Peter, for the first time, he received teaching, not by flesh and blood, because there is a teaching you can administer through the resources of what? Flesh and blood. Through concordance, commentary, the theology. You can... That's psychology, you can get something to talk about for 45 minutes and say amen at the end of the day. But that kind of talk can only minister the essence of what he's talking about. If you came there expecting spiritual food, you'll be disappointed. Your spirit will be flat because the talk is not coming from any quarters that is spiritually related. It was within the scope of what? Of flesh and what? Most of our preaching today is on that level. I mean the best pulpits in the nation. That means something has happened and many people don't know about it. That's how it happens. Something has happened and many people are not aware. They are still doing business as usual when there is a new measure of God in the earth. 
that new measure is what is responsible for the added illumination that can satisfy the level of hunger. And if you are outside of alignment from that level of operation of God, you are caught out, you are outside of a move of God, brooding in the hearts of men, seeking an, an opportunity of expression. And that's why many are always called. But eventually, if you are chosen, you need to act on your discernment to align with accuracy. Well, the Lord will help us. Now, Jesus gave out a questionnaire. And Peter's response to the question that Jesus sent out was an insight that came from heaven. What was the insight? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Twofold revelation. The revelation of Jesus as the Christ. There are many revelations of Jesus because he's an eternal personality. The revelations of him will never be exhausted, even in eternity, because he's larger than eternity. But the revelation of Jesus as Christ, one, the revelation of Jesus as the Son of God, becomes the foundation upon which the church will be built. That's Jesus' words. It means the church can be built on other revelations. But if the church is built on other revelations, the gate of hell will prevail. And just in case the church is built on other revelations, it is not Jesus that is doing the building. Because if Jesus builds, he will build based on the revelation of Jesus as what? The Christ. Jesus as what? The Son of God. I don't want to press further. I would have shown us what it means when we say the revelation of Jesus as Christ. You will discover that we are light years outside of alignment as the church of God in Nigeria. And so we should not expect with this level of compliance that will defeat the enemy of this day. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, I do not come to make you sorrowful. <laughs> the, you know, we are just doing Bible study. And you know, the purpose of Bible study is to bring clarity and so that the mind of God can be enlarged. If you are still here, say amen. amen. If you want us to change the topic, you can lift your hand and say, <laughs> change topic. Okay, there's somebody recommending for a change of topic at the back. Let us find out why that person wants this topic changed. <laughs> Please take a mic there. Take a mic. Okay, let's ask the question again. If you want uh, a change of topic, please, you can apply by a raise of hand and... Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. 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 I, I don't have time. But we will do that. We will still do that. Alright? The foundation upon which the church should be built. Because the uh, metaphor that was used to signify the church uh, was that the church is the ground and the pillar of truth. Hmm. So it is in that study we will find out what it, it, it means when we say the church is what the ground and what? The pillar of truth. Now we will use all the metaphors that Paul used to depict the church, the church as a bride, the church as an athlete, the church as a soldier, the church as this, the church as that, the church as this. When we get all of them together, then we we'll look at the, the, the higher metaphors, the ground and the pillar of truth. We we'll look at what Jesus called the church, the ecclesia. They called out once. When he called the church the ecclesia, by extension, he was making reference to an apostolic community. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's just be calm. This weekend we'll do teaching. Okay? Then on Sunday, <laughs> ah, we'll call him to come. I say, make me a teacher today. That was the prayer. I say, make me what? No prophecy. The eyes will be shut today. <laughs> the eyes close today. Let's check the scriptures. So did you get it now? He was not going to heaven. He was going where? He was going to the cross. And from the cross, we will now be included in him through an act of faith. We become members of his body. So his father now has dwellings within the house. You get that? Now, so because at this time, they were separate from Christ. So there's a higher level of dealing that God is going to make available. Is a dealing that has to do with economy. That dealing 
is tied to the person of Christ, to the work of Christ, and to the essence of Christ. So our destiny will be forged out of those realities. Christ becomes the passageway and Christ becomes the destination. So that's what he means by saying, I am the way. I am the passageway, the entrance point, and I am the destination. We are going to look at that quickly. So, Thomas now says, we don't know where you are going. So, how will we know the way? Now, this was a carnal question. has no spiritual connotation. And then, instead of Jesus to come down to Thomas's level to answer him from that his pedestal, he was operating on flesh and blood. He left him there. He answered his question from his own realm. He said, I am the way. Hmm. I'm the access point. Your contact with God the Father is through everything that I am. I am the way. I am the progressive part in the revelations of God. I am it is because of the things I did that you can even know God. There is a way my life, my ministry, my sacrifice has opened for you. I am that way. I will show you the meaning of that. Then I am the truth. And the truth in this context is not a statement of fact. It's not something that is true to the eyes or the ears or your senses. But something that is true to your spiritual senses. I am the substance of all divine reality. And just in case there was something your spirit touched that made you feel it was God you touched. It was actually me you touched. I furnished that thing that your spirit encountered. I am the substance of spiritual reality. I bring reality to all spiritual things in the realm of God. Are you with me? Now, so that's not my emphasis. The way, the truth is not my emphasis. But the life is where I'm going to. But before we can step like that, let us do some arithmetics with scripture. Maybe we'll touch the way a little, we'll touch the truth a little, and then we'll be able to make um, accommodation to understand what he meant by saying, I am the life. And then everywhere in scripture that we need to go to to understand what it means when Jesus says he's the life and how to function with the life. The revelation of the life. The words of this life. Mm. And there are insights about the life that we need to have to know how to navigate. Where you will eat bread without scarceness. There is no scarceness in that realm. There is a consistent supply of the spirit of grace and that's why the believer's life is not fragmented into seasons as it were. So you can still be fruitful in season and what? And out of season if you understand the life. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Now because for many Christians, we hear stories like, I'm dry, pastor. That's what I, in WhatsApp. What's up? So many people. That's why I do my Bible study. <laughs> See, I'm dry. Help me. Then I give a few scriptures according to the scriptures. The reason for grace is to make up for our insufficiency. Your drought is a proof that you have stumbled into insufficiency. You are now trying to achieve something by your strength. And so your reality downs of, on you. The reality of your humanity has downed on you in this drought of your experience. Why not switch back to grace? And these are the principles by which you switch back and take advantage of the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus so that you can mount up with wings like eagles. And then the person now goes and practicalizes. That, those are teachings on the path of life. Now, but Jesus, we must understand him as the life. That's the highest level of the Christian faith. The life. You know, we said the other day, ah, Jesus, help us. Okay, let's do the truth first. Then it will be easy for us to stumble into the life. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus introduced that aspect of his reality as the truth when he was trying to introduce the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, see, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is diverse. It's dynamic. It's, we cannot exhaust talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But there's an aspect of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that Jesus wanted us to understand. In fact, it is because of that aspect of his ministry that Jesus called him the spirit of truth. Are you with me? We're still doing Bible study, okay? Do you like the Bible study? 
It's because of that aspect of his ministry that Jesus called him what? The spirit of truth. Not the spirit that has truth. Or the spirit that speaks only truth. No. The spirit that is truth. As you come to see in the scriptures. And Jesus said, there are so many things I have to say to you, but you cannot bear the things I have to say. You don't have enough capacity and stature to handle the things I want to communicate with. Now, so while Jesus said that was in a particular regime in the administration of the purposes of God, I want you to understand that while Jesus walked this world, the regime he functioned from was unique. While he was still walking this world, if you wanted to inquire of God, for instance, you don't need to fast and pray. All you need to do is travel to where Jesus is and ask him, who sinned? that this man was born blind. That's inquiry. You need to fast and pray to do that. Because he was physically present. No need to trap. No. Just go where he is and say what? This is my challenge. And Jesus will, will look at you and reach back into the archives. Say, this one is not as a result of sin. But that the glory of God might be made manifest. Hallelujah. That was the way God dealt with people in that time. So Jesus now began to speak about another regime of the dealings of God. And he said that it is the regime of a personality called the spirit of truth. When that regime comes, there will be no location for you to travel to make an inquiry in the physical. Because of that, you have to travel to a spiritual location. Hence, prayer and fasting will be required. It is what? A change of regime. Oh my, you're not with me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's what? A change of what? Regime. So the approach differs. If you still sustain the old of going to look for inquiry, location, you are out of alignment because there's a change of regime. Now, so Jesus began to give us the principles and the rules that are bound with this change of regime. Jesus did everything to tell us how to operate in the kingdom. Everything. He said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. And I normally, in my teachings, I said, there are two ways you can classify spirits. The first way is the region from whence they operate. And so we have spirits called Prince of Persia, the Prince of Boko, the Prince of Makodi, Prince of Ushongo, it's based on the region where it's operating. And if you are a scientist or a researcher, you can actually, there are seven things you can look at to give us a good insight into the prince of Ushongo, if you are in Ushongo. Seven things, and you can outline the characteristics of that spirit, and through those things you can name it. But one of the ways by which spirits can be classified is the region where they operate from. All right? Second way that by which spirits are classified biblically is the, the most predominant characteristic that they sustain. So that anyone under their influence is used as a tool to advertise that characteristic. Are you with me? It is on the strength of that that this definition holds the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Now this spirit of truth, according to the book of uh, 1 John chapter 5 verse 6, 5 verse 5. Oh. 5 verse 5 says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? 5 verse 6 now wants to give us insight into who Jesus is. One. He called him the one that came by water and by blood. And the Bible says he did not come by water only, but he came by water and by blood. Are you still with me? I'm quoting from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 5 and 6. Jesus came by water and by blood. There were two ways to identify that Jesus was the promised Messiah that the Bible spoke about. first way was that he came by water. And the water that is spoken about there is the John the Baptist baptismal service. If you check the tokens of John the Baptist's ministry, in the book of John chapter 1, John said, Him that sent me to baptize. The purpose is not telling us the purpose of his baptism. 
The purpose of his baptism was a means, a strategy by which the Christ can be identified. Many other benefits came through his baptism, but the fundamental purpose for the baptism is that it was a means by which Jesus Christ can be what? Identified. And the order and the ordinance that was given to him was that while he was conducting the baptismal service, anybody upon whom the Spirit of God descends and remains will be he that will baptize with fire. Now, Jesus satisfied that claim. And so through water of baptism, it was reckoned, heaven witnessed that he was the one that you have been expecting. There was another witness about him, which was at on the cross. We did an analysis of what blood was the other time. The analysis of blood. And the analysis of the earth. We did an analysis. That's when we discovered that the best accountant in all of creation is the earth. Takes records, keeps inventories. When Abel was slain, it was the accountant that gave his grievance vocabulary. Because the Bible says that the blood of Abel was crying from where? From the ground. Mm. So there was inventory. That's what happens in accounting when you debit, but it was not credited. Eh? Have you ever sent a transfer from the bank? I, I sent, you, Eugenia, I sent you transfer for her to go and do something. And then they debited my account. I called her. They don't credit your own. After 24 hours, they don't credit you. 48 hours, I say, oh my. It means the account is crying. Ah. <laughs> it means there was debit, but what? No credit. And the equation must be balanced. And the earth will fight for the balance. So what he was doing there was accounting. There have been debit. And the accountant is now enforcing the will of the debtor. The, the ones that was debited. There has been no credit on this debit. So heaven had to move and to strike him. So that's the best accountant. Takes inventory of blood, takes inventory of all sorts. And when Israel was to be established as a nation, some rules and regulations were given. One of the first rules was don't shed blood. Because God will require the blood you have shed out of your hand. One of the reasons why God was able to take the land of the Hittites, the land of the Amorites, the land of the Canaanites, was because they violated the law of the land. And as part of their worship, they had bloodshed, human bloodshed as part of their, their worship. So the ground was taken inventory. And God now spoke to his son Abraham. I said, your people will go into captivity. There's an arithmetic that I'm doing. The land is taking inventory of the violations taking place. So in meantime, in the meantime, while the inventory is being taken, you guys will become slaves. It will take like 400 years to have full inventory. So you guys, during that time, go and be slaves and learn under the yoke of your tax masters. The tax masters will impart unto you skills. All right? You know, all a businessman needs is a skill. You can, even if you get angry, you cannot be aware that this night. <laughs> because there's a meticulous process that you need to go through to become aware of that. Now, so those guys ensure that they had skills. That's the first requirement for prosperity. Skills. So the guys had skills, but no salary for their skills. No problem. 400 years salary was paid in one day, and then they came out. And then when they came out, the people that God wanted to allocate their land to, those people, their sin, the cup of the inventory of their sin has filled up. So the ground wants accounts balanced. So it was not by their sword they conquered. The ground threw them out, ejected them. You cannot take a man out of the land that God has planted. No, his son will not will, will escape and come back after 20 years to fight you. But when, when God wants to do that, he comes into alliance with the land to take inventory. And then he wipes the people, displaces them eternally, and puts another people on the same ground. That was what happened for Israel. The accountant was taking inventory. When he reached a tipping point, he now called his people, well, I go and take the land now. The land itself will fight for you and you will take possession. And there will be no counter-attack. Hallelujah. When Jesus was put on the cross, the Bible reveals that when his own blood touched the ground, there was earthquake. Because the accountant did not have enough leisure 
to register the impact of that blow. The accountant lost track of records. So there was earthquake. It was that earthquake that tore the veil of the temple from the top to the bottom. And culture is affecting the text. Culture. I know you will say, okay, as it was torn, it means the presence of God is available. Yes, that's true. But there's a cultural aspect of that scripture. Because when a Jewish man becomes either sorrowful or angry, he tears his garment from top to bottom. Indicative of the fact that it was the father himself that tore it. Because of his grief. In the history of God, he has never been separated from his son. That was the first time in the history of God he's having that experience. And his grief was expressed by his garment that was torn. Are you saying with me? So the Bible says Jesus came by water and the second way he came was what? By blood. His credibility was announced in these two instances. And just, you were, just in case you were not there, when, the water, when he did water baptism, just in case you were not there when the blood touched the ground, there is still another way you can find out that Jesus is the Christ. By the spirit of truth. In his ministry, when he bears witness. Mm. For it is the spirit that bears witness, the Bible says. Why is he subdued with the authority to bear witness? Because he mm. is truth. Now, so when we talk truth, we are not looking statement of facts. We are talking furnishing realities. Mm. So when Christ says, I am the truth, he's saying, I am the one that furnishes all spiritual reality. Now, strike a chord. Strike a chord on that, on that keyboard. Let's call a reality now. Now, you see, if we begin to we'll pray small, then the reality will come. The way we know that that reality has come is because the spirit of truth furnishes it. Oh, yeah. I believe. On the part of spiritual progress, it's not a part of words and a part of hymns and psalms. It's a part of reality. It's a part of furnishings. A part of signals. A part of cycles. A part of pictures. Furnished by the Holy Ghost. To witness about realities that your physical senses cannot touch. Jesus said, I, I am the reality. Now can you see that because of the cross, there is nothing we can achieve without him. Mm. He is the reality. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the resurrection. Have you ever read that scripture that says, The spirit of him that raises Jesus Christ from the dead dwelleth in you. He will quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you. That is Christ as the resurrection. He quickens your mortal bodies. He, 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 he activates it. I hope you know you cannot pray effectively except you are quickened. It is the resurrection that facilitates, that is the economy that governs those dimensions. Everything you touched that was real was me. That's what Jesus is saying. And the cross is going to ensure that when I go there and I'm pierced, your life will be an expression of my reality. The reason why you can fall and rise is because of my reality. The reason why you can prophesy and it will come to pass, it will be because of my reality. The reason why death, many people died and death hovered and he could not find you is because of my reality. So he becomes the reason why your business will flourish. He becomes the reason why your family life will work. Somebody came to me and said, Ah, what is the wisdom behind a happy family? I said, Be a Christian. They, they, <laughs> are you a Christian? They, it will work. <laughs> but if you, are, if you are not yielded to the Holy Ghost, the reality, the way, the truth, because you and your wife will quarrel now, the, the, the truth will come and say, Go and apologize. You, are, you, are, you have missed it. If you are full of yourself there, the, that's where the crack will come from. Are you a Christian? You allow the sun to rise before you make reconciliation. Or you will say, I'm the head of the home. She should come. I'm the head. <laughs> are you a Christian? Everything becomes an expression of the reality of Christ. Mm, okay, let's invoke some reality so that you can practically understand it. Let's pray for five minutes. The prayer point is come, come here, come. Holy Ghost, come here, come here. Mm, come here. 
See, you can bring his presence here. Yeah. Listen. Ah. There's a reality that came in. Hallelujah. A reality that came in. Why we worship, why we pray. And you see, Christ, Jesus is saying, I furnished it. Before you could know, is I bore witness. That's why you could know. Are you with me? Now, listen to me. Can you see this robe from this place down here? The Holy Spirit will wear a cap for somebody. Now, based on the reality that came, I'm trying to describe the reality now. The little I know about this reality. In this robe here, the Holy Ghost will put a cap. Now, this cap will come on this person, on this, from here. Now, you see, there is something happening on this row, but the one I'm talking about is here. Are you with me? That is another reality. I want to show you the one, one here, on this row. It will become intense. The, the, the person will not be able to hold it. He will wear a cap. Something like a cap from heaven. Like a cap from heaven. He's already walking. He's walking as I'm talking. He's walking stronger. 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 Now, in this choir now, that cap has multiplied. Now, all of you here stand up. This room. 
the cap will begin to walk. It 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 will begin to walk. Holy Ghost, I want to ask that you put on that cap on that person. It's coming stronger. Stronger, 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 stronger. Now, we are still teaching. We are still teaching. Don't, don't yield much. <laughs> uh, sister, okay, bring that one. Bring that one. At least we have one there. Now, why? I, there's a cup. 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 Now. Please sit down. Please. 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 I'm trying to explain something. It's still a cup. find a way of going back to our Bible study. Must find a way. Now let's understand this cap much, much more than we have understood it. And the cap is still working. There. Still working. Okay, let's give the cap some time. Some time to work. Let's give the cap some time. Okay. Bring that one. Bring that one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Ah. You see, if we go on now, this thing won't stop. Because another reality has come. Ah! Mahase! Salia! Mayatoka! Ika miando! Sabula tame! Akaila masoke marika! There's a chain breaking from the of a young man. A chain. A chain. A chain. Father, I break that chain. Yes, I release the young man from that chain. I set him at liberty. I proclaim the grace of God upon him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
another reality. But we will not enter this one, please. We will not enter this one. Take her back. Take her back. Take them back. Take them back. Take them back. Take them back. Please sit down, please, if you can. If you can. If you can. Now, the only reason why. The only reason why. Amen. Now, you can. You can switch the mic off. The only reason why I could know that that reality entered here. It's because the spirit of truth bore witness. Uh, oh no. You see, there's something I'm trying to stop from entering here. There are three trumpets already. And this signifies the gift of prophecy. I want to stop. Because if that one comes, we cannot teach again. And I pray that today I will be a teacher. with me. If you are here, say amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue. Amen. <laughs> he is the reality. On the part of life, you do not joke with what he furnishes. Many times, the difference between life and death is a sign. It's, it's a part of life. We need more discernment to, to respond effectively to the promptings of God through signs and signals, much more than we need the gift of discernment to discern devils. I was traveling from here. I wanted to get to Joss. So I entered the bus, I paid, entered the bus, and, and the sign came. And I knew this bus would not reach Joss. So I, I came down quietly, went back to the counter, I asked for my money. The man shouted. I gave him his receipt. He shouted and then paid me my money, less 100. So no problem. Five minutes later, they were loading the next bus. I now came again. Say, that time he didn't shout again. You got he had confirmed that I'm mad. <laughs> it was he had confirmed that this one is mad. So no need to. So he just it was at Akwanga that that bus hung entered one valley. And the bread people struggled to buy at the park. It was seen the car. It was, that was the only thing that survived. The bread. It was a sign. The spirit of truth bore witness. There are signposts on the path of life. And these signposts are witnesses born by the spirit of truth. Now we don't have time to talk about the language of the spirit. The language. Because there's a language he uses. There's somebody in my house in Lagos, he went to do a, a course on programming, computer programming. So he came and was doing some things on the computer that I've never seen before. I said, because in my own little way, I, I thought I knew how to use a computer. Until I saw the guy doing some strange things. I said, what is this? This is programming language. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. In the spirit, there's a language. That's the language people have not fully perfected. That has made them victims in the hand of the devil. In my study of the Bible and in experience as a Christian, maybe not a very matured Christian anyway, but a Christian, I found some languages. One of them is burdens. It's a language. 
That's the first language of the spirit. A body. The Bible says this is God that walketh in us. Both to will and to do according to his own good pleasure. A body is such a language that holds you captive. And doesn't release you until you do according to his own good pleasure. So that scripture was talking about God imposing upon you his desires. And holding you captive until you begin to do them. Have you ever had a body? It's a language. It's only the spirit of truth that furnishes that kind of language. And only on the path of spiritual progress. The path of life. That's where such language is required. I have been dealing with a computer for many years. I have had no reason to program. And because of that, my deficiency in programming language was not obvious. You can live as a Christian and not have any reason to observe the stops, the signs of the path of life. So the language may not necessarily be important to you. You may not know how to handle a body. You may not know that a body is actually a sign that you are a house of rep member. You see, when you are representing your constituency, the house of rep, eh, they might bring a Ghana must go and disburse money. If the house of rep member does not know that the money that has been disbursed is for his constituency, he might build a house in Makodi. That money is blood money. It's the money of the people he came to represent that has been given to him. That money should translate to, to hospitals, community health care centers, should trans, tra, tra, translate to roads, water. But the House of Rep members forgot himself. So he took the Ghana must go. Where? To Makodi. When God begins to don't add burdens to you, it means you are representing a people. It means you are a recognized house of rep member. You have a constituency. What God does not give everybody a body, except you are representing a people. Have you ever had a body for your family before? If you have never had a body for your family, it means you are not relevant in helping your family realize God's purpose. So the programming language didn't come to you. You had no need to know about it because we are not involved in the economy of the restoration of your family. But if by any means there's a body, it means that you are a house of rep member. But you see, I have discovered in Nigeria, house of rep members. <laughs> there are some that don't even, you will never see them on the floor. <laughs> He's never there. His own seat is vacant. It means there is no representation in the house. So if an earthquake hits his village, there is nobody to say, see, the attention of this house is drawn to my village somewhere in Buruku, where there is an earthquake. One hundred and something thousand people are already injured. The number of the dead has not been quantified. As a matter of national interest, we are supposed to attend to this matter. If it is true that we are there in the interest of the nation, such a call should require a response. But the house member is not around. So when bodies were doled out, he didn't receive any. It means his constituency will suffer. I want to ask you, what have you done to your constituency? Because on the part of life, there's a language. There's a language. For me, I prayed for my family for 10 years. 10 calendar years. On the field, football field. Ten years. Until I came to a point in my prayer where God assured me that no witchcraft from my family can affect me again. Because of the heart and the body, the prayer I prayed for that family. I've grown higher than the witchcraft of the family.
your spiritual level and ranking will never increase until you know how to handle bodies. <laughs> bodies. For how many years have you been praying for Boko? It's a long time. You don't even know again. You are not counting it in days. What can drive a man? All of his youthful days, he's squandering it on a body. Those are the kind of people that cannot see death until their eyes see the things that they have cried for. The Bible says, the man like Simeon, God had sworn. <laughs> it's not everybody you can come with full and come with full and and keep. There are some people that God swore about. There are some demands they have made. Because it is not time for the demands to find expression, God has said, okay, you cannot die. So even if you pray to die, death will not come. If death comes to the neighborhood and slaughters and slaughters, when he sees you, it will turn backward. Because there is something hanging on your life. The extent of ranking you can sustain is dependent on how well you have attended to burdens. That's the first in the language. Burdens. If he cannot trust you with a burden yet, you are not too significant. And this is whether or not you are a pastor, a civil servant. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This one is whether you are a believer. Because I'm still a civil servant. And one day God came to me and told me, I said, if you don't pray for your office, if something evil happens, don't blame me. He now left. That means you have the responsibility, your office people and your constituency. Through your prayers, you can influence what happens. If you know how many people we have sacked because of that license God gave me, we sack people. When a wicked man rises ah, and we identify him, he does wickedness once. Wickedness two times. We wait for him to do three times first. So we are sure that his heart is set on wickedness. And the first one was not a mistake. You see, when you are made manager, be careful. <laughs> oh my. In the night, seven days of prayer. And on the sixth day, God now said, I've sent the wind that will re remove him. It, I, my prayer was seven days prayer. It took seven days from the seventh day for him to be sacked. I prayed for seven days. And after my seven days prayer, count one, two, three, four, five, six. On the seventh day, he was sacked. A body. The man that God puts the body of Castle rock on his heart because that burden has not been on my heart since I was born. It means that that is not the gate that I'm assigned to because every believer must know the gate to which it's assigned. Every believer must know how to enter into the spirit realm and cut covenants in the spirit to influence the corridor of his gates. If you have a burden for Castle rock, it means you can unseat the person there. Your body determines your authority, the sphere of your authority and influence. I had a body for my family for many years until God revealed to me that the witchcraft of my family cannot affect me. So I'm influential there because I've carried a body about that constituency. There are people that God puts bodies of cities on their hearts. And when they begin to deal faithfully with these burdens god now says the good of the land in that city will come to you why because we explored what a body as long as you stand in that terrain you have cover because your life and your witness in the territory is part and parcel of the structure spiritual structures god has built there to secure his purpose now, so when people don't understand how to interpret the language called burdens, we have a problem. Can we go further? Hallelujah. I say, can we go further? Yes. Now, before we go further, get me a microphone. Let's do 10 minutes of interaction. Because these things, I want to ensure that you understand. 
They are life applicable. Life applicable truths that every accurate believer must be a participant in at this point in time. Do we have a handheld mic? No, not this time. Give me. You don't have. Where, what of the other mic we came with? He has not. Okay, he has not arrived. Oh my. Oh, Jesus, help us. Okay. Uh, if you have a question about a body, you can stand up. I will amplify it so that to the hearing of everybody. How many people a body? And it is a concern to you. All right. So we'll take two people. This brother and that brother. Osha, come. Pick my mic. Go straight to the point. Don't tell us your name. Whether you lived in Cameroon before. No, just this is my experience. This is what is happening to me. I have not been able to understand it fully to know how to go about it. If we have the answer, we'll tell you. If we don't, because we are not God. All right? So if we don't, we'll also tell you we don't have it. And then we'll now go and ask from God, and then tomorrow we can come back with the answer, if he decides to answer us. So, attend to him. Or go to him, find out what he's saying, and come and... Because people become anointed when they have mic. <laughs> Montaba Korima. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, please, we'll hear him out and then we'll take the question and then we'll address it in 10 minutes after which we'll begin to pray. Now, we have, just like I said, one of the languages of the Spirit is burdens. It's placed upon your heart. Yes. No, his question is that if God gives you a burden and you were not able to meet up and this is in past and you return back will God give you back the burden you see the kingdom does not operate on your convenience you know, you know so when you are ready you now come and switch the body on again I don't come now <laughs> now let me tell you how the kingdom works amen if God gives you a body you didn't handle it well you discover that you start you stop receiving burdens until you ask for mercy. You stop. He will avoid you when he comes to burdens. He will avoid you meticulously, and uh, he will go to other people. You'll be hearing people tell you that for the whole night I could not sleep. There was this thing troubling me, and you'll be wondering, are you in the same kingdom? Because there was a body you did not handle adequately. Until you repent, the body is no longer activated. Those, that dimension, you are cut off from it. Nothing steps you up higher for ranking and stature more than being faithful to bodies. Hallelujah. Now, can anybody tell us the last body you had and how you went about it? Why we try to get his own question. The last body. What, what was the last body you had? No, if we go to pastors, the thing won't be good. The last body you had and how you went about handling that body. Anybody like that? Here. The last body. Okay, what's the last body you had? Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, three days back, I woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning and I had the body to pray for the country. And as I began to pray, suddenly I dozed off. And I, it was like a vision. I saw aliens. Some aliens were summoned from, from another realm. So somehow it, it was as though somebody was with me in the vision. And he began to interpret and told me, those are foreign soldiers that will be imported from other countries to rage havoc during the election. And suddenly I came back to my consciousness and I began to pray. Yes, and when I finished praying, I discovered it was 5.30 in the morning. Now, what you do? Don't assume you have fully addressed the body until you have what we call a release. If you don't have a release, it means the body is still valid. You know, many times people come to church and say, God, I need next level. For 90% for, for of the people, God's plan for them is not next level. <laughs> 
God is still on the last matter. <laughs> I was in the airport trying to board the flight and they delayed the flight. Somebody now sent me a WhatsApp message and said, this is, when we went to camp, these were the prayer points and he sent, and I sent the person back and said, all these prayer points are not accurate. What? You do know who led the, these prayers? Is this person that led it? Ah! What a, You have come again. I said, no, no. Leave me out of this matter. According to the scriptures, this, 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 this prayer point is invalid. See the scripture. Let's not go prophetic. Let's go scripture. Let's go scripture. All the scriptures, all the, the prayer points were not founded in the Bible. And that's where they travel. You know how it, hard it is to leave Lagos to go to, to camp. Hey, they hold up. You are just there. And that's, then you go and pray that prayer point and come back. No, I think, I think uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. All this, then I began to instruct. I began to teach. I began to teach. The guy now said, wait, pastor, wait. But why is it that you start by making us feel we are wrong? I said, no. <laughs> it's not so. The thing is, the purpose of discernment is so that truth can be established. We are in a generation where they are, our least gift is discernment. So anything goes. And when somebody has a ministry to boost people's discernment so that they will be accurate and in alignment, you believe he's critical. Oh. Well, the, do you know why the person was... The person could not imagine that. How old are you? That you are trying to... You couldn't imagine that I'm the one that is right. Ah, what are you? And the issue is not about who is right or wrong. You will know whether you are accessing God in the spirit. You will know. Or you are just doing jamboree. Everybody. The fact that there is a crowd doesn't mean there is anything going on. May the Lord give us understanding. I believe that somewhere in the middle belt of this country, God will begin to spark accurate apostolic Christianity. Amen. I believe that. It will begin to spread. A time will come, maybe in the next 10 to 15 years, falsehood will die a natural death. Amen. Most of the auditoriums you are seeing built now will be empty. Just wait. Let's give it 12 years. Most, even in my country, there have been many buildings that they have robbed people to build. The pillar is bogus. But there's nobody inside. So if a time we come when they want to do wedding, reception. Those kind of halls will be available. <laughs> God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Any kind of ministry you are running that the Holy Ghost is not in the center. It, is, it, it has an expiry date. Your circle of doctrines will wear out. It will wear out. It doesn't matter whether you have a title. Your circle of doctrines will wear out. We navigate by the Spirit. It's the cloud that shows us the direction. As long as we are not, we are not in sync with the cloud, we are going to become irrelevant very soon. God will help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, so we tarry with a body until we have the release. If God gave you that prayer point, that body, it means he makes you responsible for it. There are sometimes he gives us a body, you know you, you alone can't handle it, but you are responsible. So I can call Sati in Kaduna, call Tony in Otupo, I say, see this is what I saw, let's pray along. So I've gathered more people so that we can attend to something that God has made me responsible for. And then we'll stay on it until there is what? A release. Don't just touch it and then you say, wow. It's 5 a.m. Hey. No. You go back until there's what? A release. Let me tell you, I was in Lagos when they sent me WhatsApp. Full of people have come back. I say, God, what is this time? And I went again. Hallelujah. I cry. I say, calm down. This is... They won't come again. Don't worry. This, this one is a distraction. It's okay. So I had a release. Hallelujah. Just in case you are from where they attacked, they won't come again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
there must be a release. That's how we change things in the earth. We change things. That body gives you license to, to have the ability to change something. Don't stop until it is changed. Some of us have carried a revival body from 1994 till today. That is how many years now? That is, that revival will come here. How many years? Okay, about 21 years. And the body has refused to go. Somebody will now say, hey, God might know the answer to this thing. As long as he still releases grace for you to tarry around that body, it means he is actively involved in the process. He's doing it with you. Somebody asks God, ah. you know, when Jesus appears, sometimes he can give you an opportunity to talk to him, ask him questions. And most of the questions we ask him, if it's the first time he's coming, second time, you ask him your fake questions. Like, what is your idea about Chelsea Arsenal? <laughs> he will not rebuke you. He will allow you to laugh. When you finish laughing, he will tell you that the only problem I have is that you want to do things without me. If not, I would have been happy to do it with you. Do you know that God can be cooking with you? Oh, you don't understand it. You see, he won't, he's, he's sad when we don't involve him. So in a body, he's doing it with you. So you cannot claim that God is not answering because he's the one empowering you to stay around it. Now, we need to talk about the issues of life critically because we are a generation that must understand how to carry spiritual responsibility. Are you still with me? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. There are about two. The, the second. Okay. Okay. The other one you added is your own body. Please don't add the body to the The question is uh, how can can somebody who have been burdened by God to pray for the conversion of, or conversion of an Islamic city? manifest or translate it into physical manifestation uh, you see one thing I said is like even your mandate your call into ministry it comes with a body that is sustained throughout your lifetime alright when I come to a place I come among believers my body always is how how can all of us be mature Christians? that's what I think is it possible? That's my, that's my concern. I'm troubled when we have one million people gathered and only 25 of them know God. It's a, it's a deficit on the nation. I'm troubled when we have two million people gathered and only five people can access God. Only five people can command deliverances unto Jacob. It means that there is a measure a level of the move of God in that nation that will never come. Because on the day of Pentecost, it took 120 gifted and statured men to bring the Holy Ghost out of heaven. If the number is not complete, number of mature people that are known in heaven is not complete, there are many dimensions of the move of God that will be shut down. See, our physical numbers is not equivalent to the number of people that are in the move of God. You can have 2 million people in a church, and only 21 people in the move of God. The 21 people there are the only people that God consults when he wants to move. And he gives them strategies, gives them bodies, gives them instructions on what they should do. The other people are dead weight. Hallelujah. Now, so, the idea is, we need more ranking men. And my own concern is, how can we have what? More ranking men. The things I teach come out of inspiration that come during prayer when I'm exercising this body. Do you get that? It comes, you can't go to Bible school and learn it. As I'm exercising the body in the place of prayer, God will begin to teach me what I'm teaching you now. In fact, the message of today, I've not started teaching it. The one I got from prayer. He's still teaching me more. As I'm preaching now, I'm learning. Your life should be lived of the resource of a body. I mean all through your life. So you are saying you are praying about an Islamic city. That may be your calling. That may be your assignment for life. 
If you judge a body with time, it means you don't understand how the protocol of heaven works. Somebody came to my house and said, see, I finished um, aviation school, so, 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 yeah. Finished as the best student. See, Eric rejected me. Error. They are playing me like this. I said, ah, you don't understand this thing. We don't quantify life in terms of time. We quantify it in terms of encounter. So let me ask you, what is God saying now? It, if whether, that is a proof whether you have kept pace with God. Somebody say, I'm 36. There's no husband. Oh. Satan will use time to weary you. We don't measure progress in terms of time. What Do you have the current revelation in your own dealings with God? What is he dealing with now? Uh, are you with me? Let's talk in terms of encounter. Because there are many things that require some time to come to pass. Requires that you mature to a particular level to be able to handle, handle it. Why will you transport that your anger into marriage? It's already an explosive. IED. Looking for expression. And God is insisting that you must go over this hurdle before I open this chamber. So through the encounters you're having with God now, we'll know how close you are to what you seek. So what did he say last week? And the guy did not have anything to tell me that God told him last week. It means you are not on the radar. Your, your problem, now, don't talk about job now. Let's find out how to bring you back to the radar. The heaven is seeing you. The proof that a church was a church in the book of Revelation was that Jesus was sending messages to them. Is that not so? So if there were churches in those times that Jesus didn't send message, it means that church is not a church. Just like there are churches, many big churches without a message. His spirit did not direct any message to that as an assembly. What makes you think it's a church? Oh my. Oh, I know you don't like my talk. You, you know, truth, people don't like it. You see somebody recycling messages for 12 years, God has not spoken. Means that congregation is not known. We talk about things in terms of encounter, not time. If you hold on to time, time doesn't exist in God's realm. Satan will use it to weary you. Talk about where you are in God. Because for 10 years, I was in hardship and poverty. But when I pray, God will tell me about nations. And it enters and ventilates me. For 10 years, nothing happened. My two trousers were the two trousers I had. And when I came out of the prayer room, I felt robust. That nothing was missing. Nothing was broken. If you probe me, I tell you about the nations. The nations. I see the nations. I see the nations. You will not say I'm a madman. Because you, I don't care what you think. But what I want, I see. It's in terms of encounter, not time. You don't have any encounter with God. You are not up to date and you are expecting something. I think you are violating the protocol. I see the nations. I see it. I see it. I preach and say it. I'll go to the mountain. I'll come down and say, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, people will say this man. <laughs> you don't mind. In terms of encounter. In terms of encounter. In terms of encounter. In 2009, that was the first time I traveled out of this country. In my hotel room, I was praying. Jesus stepped into the room. I said, Then I went down. Then he told me, he said the youth. He said it four times. The youth. The youth. The youth. I said, I've heard the youth. He said, use your power of insight to deliver them from distraction. And I will open the gates of nations to you. So he came to show me the how. First he told me the nations. He didn't tell me how I'll get there. In 2009, when I went to Dubai, it, in my room, he came and I told me how. I should focus on the youth. Before that time, I didn't like youth ministry. I came back and I was on every campus. Yes. I stayed there from 2009, 10, 11, 12, it was 13, 12. The doors began to open to the nations. I prayed in 2012. He said, this is not me opening the, the door. It is human beings are opening the door. Don't enter. 2013, I prayed again. And I said, this one in Malawi, enter. It's me that opened that one. So I now entered in 2013. Now, I had known 
10 years before that day that I'll be going to the nations. The day I got there, when I came for screening, you know, they'll put your bag through the, the screen to see whether you're carrying. They didn't screen my bag. They said, Pastor, you came to our nation. The immigration officer was assigned to carry my, my bag. They knew I was coming. He arranged the way. Now, if you, if you had seen me 10 years ago and I believed my poverty, I would have been a fool. I told you when Apollo 11 went to the moon and snapped the earth, it is only Africa that was seen through the horoscope. Yes. Only the continent of Africa was seen. And our poverty was not seen. So if what your drive is, is your poverty, you are operating on a wrong reference. May the Lord give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I saw was the nations. That was the burden. That was the direction. God said, this teaching you are doing in this village, you will do it in the nations. So whenever I, I stood to teach, I will not, I will be teaching people that are not seeing my congregation was small then. But the messages I preached, hey, as if I was preaching, crying out. And some of the tapes that were taken from those preachings, they went to the nations. Somebody called me 3 a.m. in the morning and said, I have not slept. I said, is it demonic activity? He said, no. He had been hearing my message from yesterday till now. So he said he should call me. I, I thought there was an assignment. <laughs> but it was still part of the body called the nations. To be woken up by 3 o'clock. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Our life is measured in terms of what? Encounter. Not in terms of time. Now, if you are up to date with God, uh, Pastor Anduna, what is the current dealing of God on your life? Can you give us little insight? Before we pray, current, these are the, the current news breaking out of heaven concerning you. Praise the Lord. I don't know why he singled me out to <laughs> say the current dealings in my life. Amen. Just as he has said about burdens, he must lay them upon your life you are consistent whether it is working whether it's not working whether people are responding whether people are not responding but the major factor there is you are doing it you are consistent and the, the major dealings now with me are that this consistency now, the river that is breaking forth is dropping small. So my, my mindset now and everything I am working with God is towards that river that I saw that is dropping small small, you will not be in the haste. It revealed that it began small. So you must be willing and patient and disciplined and so balanced and practice the small, small. So my current dealings with him now, the thing is coming small. You know, because people... Pastor Ike, when, how many years back did you first feel the healing anointing or this anointing that people fall? How many years back now? That should be about 18 years now. 18 years. Yes. Uh, but before you had this manifestation, did you desire it? I desired it because I saw a man who manifested that dimension and I desired it. I 
it means we, we determine prophetic science and truth. One. And we spark up current desires in the economy of God. You saw a man move in that anointing and then you desired it. That man is one of the sons of Isaiah. They have the capacity to stir up. Their lives can stir up a body. You listen to a preaching and then suddenly you inherit a body. That is a man operating by the spirit of prophecy. If you touch him, you touch part of what he's carrying. And if you follow on, you become exactly what that anointing made that man. If you notice that they, when the Bible says that the spirit of Elijah came upon John the Baptist, it was evidence in his dress. Even the team man made him start dressed like what the Elijah he never saw. So that anointing that, that was responsible for the body you caught is going to make you like it. So you desired. How many years did you walk in this desire before the manifestation came? I walk in I walk in this desire for eight years before the manifestation came. See, the problem is that people can't continue for eight years. They are hearing me. <laughs> people cannot continue for eight years because they count their life in terms of time and not in terms of encounter. You look around and you are you are the spirit of competition makes you feel you are failing. That's not how we know we are failing. You are not a seed of time. You are a seed of eternity. Nothing in time can, can, can be promotion or success to you. The thing is, are you in sync with God? Are you in step with God? Are you going with God? How many years did T.D. Jakes preach before he got his break? 17 years. 17 to 19 years. I watched him when he entered Ghana. Only a colossus could, could, could speak like that. Only a colossus could speak like that. He spoke like an ancient. Spoke deeper than a man that took 17 years to train. What had broken out of his life was not measured in years. Me, I will wait. I will wait. I don't know about you, but I will wait. I will wait. It takes time before a spiritual thing is formed. It takes time. Before somebody can be a skilled witch, you need 21 years. They will initiate a person by eight, nine, seven, five. And the demons can lie far low until the fullness of time. That person can hover over nations and cities. And manipulate the seat of government when the spirit is full grown nothing spiritual happens all of a sudden if an evangelist comes to science and power say next week there's some allow him go his powerful preaching will not change the order <laughs> it takes time <laughs> it takes time it takes time i will wait the prayer is easy this evening. I will wait. I've decided to wait. The devil wants you to take off like a tornado. Wants you to enter into manifestation before God has ordained it. The Bible says he was in the deserts until his time of sowing forth unto the Israel of God. That's how a spiritual thing grows. It's measured in terms of encounter and not time. Can we rise and say, Lord, I will wait for you. I will wait. 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 For he makes all things beautiful in his own time. When you are in the process, when you are keeping pace with God, something is building, something is rising, something is raging, something is moving, something is kicking. I will wait. Disadvantaged. Go 
God has not turned his eyes away. You are just in the process. That is the part of every spiritual man. Grace to wait, grace to tarry, grace to remain where he wants me to be. I will wait. I will wait. make haste. Many people, the devil have beguiled many people through haste to leave the place where God was forming them. Can you cry and say, Holy God, me, is a decision tonight. I will wait. I know it is hard where you are. I know it is difficult. I know it's a burden. But we will wait until you perfect your counsel. Until a voice is raised for my family. Until I gain enough stature, I will be waiting. I will be waiting. I will be waiting. You will bring the best to me. You will bring the best into my life. I will be waiting. I will be waiting. I'll be waiting.
somebody close to you and say, Lord, this one will not miss his timing, her time. Listen to me. Listen, 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 listen. God has shown me that mighty things are set to be released to his people. Mighty things. Mighty things. Things unprecedented. Things fresh. You know, Pastor Anduna say small, small drops. There's nothing small in the spirit realm. Because that which appeared as small as the hand of a man was the sign to show a mighty abundance of rain. That thing you call small, eh? It's a sign. It's a sign of things mighty, things sovereign, things great. You know, those days I had only one shoe. It's a white shoe. Jesus, you need to see. This woman was the only woman that believed that somebody in such a shoe can reach the nations. This, this woman, <laughs> I don't know if I, her faith was radical. For you to even, ah, Jesus. If you look at us today, you are using the wrong parameter. There's something building bigger than ourselves that I've been building for a long time. Yes. For God has told me that I will not die until I see revival. In this I will not. My eyes will see it. And it will not be wasted. It will be managed. Because we will export it to the nations of the world. Some of these regions will be the greatest regions in, 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 what do I call it? Help me with the word. Ah. Okay. People from different parts of the world come here because of that move of This place will become prominent. It will come, it will enter into the map, the spiritual map of Africa, this, these regions. And some of us, God has promised us that we will not die. Our eyes will see the consolation. So what is walking behind is bigger than what we look like. For that we will wait. Though it seems there are troubles, there are financial challenges, there are issues on ground. No, there's something bigger than my issues that I see. It gives me consolation. That there has been a schedule for your day of manifestation. A schedule for your time. So what the devil knows is that he cannot change the date of that manifestation, but he can, he can, he can affect your compliance, your faithfulness to that body, to that reality. So irrespective of what darkness does, we will be standing. You see, if you know God more, the devil will become a very small equation. Very small equation. It can be ignored actually. When you just realize that 365 days you did not mention devil in your prayer. He can be ignored. It's not, it's not significant. Hallelujah. 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 Can you say, can you pray and say, God, I will not be deceived by the devil to change my level of allegiance for you. I know many things are trying to capture your attention. Many things are trying to distract you. Many things are trying to hold you sway. But God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a son of man that he should repent. I will be standing where he has prescribed he will make my mountain strong he will bring to pass the things that he has spoken a little one shall become a thousand a small one shall become a strong nation Prophets and apostles 
Jesus will be sent to the nations of the world from Nigeria. The counsel of the Lord will be steadfast. For God is not a man that he should lie. We align with you, O oh, great one. Thank you, Father.